uh, today I'd like to to read with you uh, the next story in the bucket and the rope and the bucket and the rope is another type of uh, story uh, which is inscribed in what I can define as allegory and as the title shows the bucket and the rope are two inanimate objects supposed to tell a story and when I say inanimate object we are in the realm of allegory and the bucket and the rope is a story written by Tev Boys and as we can see the dates living at the end of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century uh, a British novelist and story, a short story writer and he is best remembered for his allegorical novel Mr. Wilson's Good Wine which he wrote in 1927 Poise is influenced by the Bible and John Bunyan and Jonathan Swift when I say these two writers I am again in the realm of allegory as John Bunyan wrote his Pilgrim's Progress in the end of the 17th century and Jonathan Swift in Gulliver's Travels in the 18th century uh, two writers writing allegories and Poise was also uh, influenced by writers like Thomas Hardy and Nietzsche and when I say Thomas Hardy we can see that the test setting in which the bucket and drop and his writings are uh, set as agriculture ruler and we say Nietzsche is skinned of 20th century skepticism I would like to introduce these influences to see uh, uh, the way Boise is writing and especially when I deal with the allegory uh, uh, he wrote novels and here is the list Black Barony, Mark Only and so on the list is long story collections of story it is a long short uh, collection of short stories and uh, as I deal today with the bucket and rope as I said uh, the, the title uh, is written in a collection of stories called fables and when say fables uh, the title bucket and rope it is the standard title the X and the Y like in the hair and the tortoise and uh, it is a common title in uh, stories written in fables and when I say fables I am uh, talking about using animals or inanimate objects which talk and thus enter the human world so uh, 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 the Fontaine's fables Kalila Wadimna and uh, Jonathan's uh, the uh, uh, Pilgrim's Progress also uh, can allude to Orwell's Animals Farm, Animals Farm. Uh, the, the importance of the allegory is to raise issues moral uh, political social but characters are animals objects and uh, the title here of the bucket and the rope uh, invites us to infer moral for the story and both doesn't tell us what the moral should be uh, the bucket and the rope why bucket and rope and not rope and bucket one question that comes to my mind the uh, probably the automatic cancer bucket and rope probably because B comes before R so it follows the chronological order of the alphabetical order uh, bucket because when we say bucket we have in mind kicking the bucket and as an idiomatic expression means committing suicide and that's what you have in the story and the bucket is first kicked and the rope plays its role that is hanging the major character in the story when we see allegory again, bucket and rope, he talks about simple country folk. And here, bucket and rope 
find characters, uh, objects, which can conserve, uh, converse and show human-like intelligence, and they focus on the basic human predicament and often on the twin themes of love and death. In the story, Mr. Dandy, major character, used the bucket and the rope to kill himself. So they are directly involved. Uh, and when they are involved there, they are interested in studying humankind. However, their assumption about how the world works and should work are different from ours. And it's very intelligent that the writer here include objects, inanimate objects, which are going to read, discuss, and judge a human behavior. And the moral is always clear. Sometimes writers use allegories for moral purposes, political purposes. And when I, example, bring into mind or George Orwell's Animals Farm, which is an allegory, it is about a dictatorship. Animals are narrating and they are involved in the activity of the Russian revolutions and thus unveiling the uh, power of dictatorship. But here in the bucket and the robe, we are uh, interested in a human, the complexity of a human behavior. And we are not told, but we infer that Mr. Dandy kills himself because he loves his wife and cannot bear it when he discovers he may kill love to the lawyer's son. But ironically, the bucket and the robe do not and cannot see this. And when they see Mr. Dandy's wife satisfying both her husband and the lawyer's son, they do not consider it as a problem, but as a good thing. And this is where we say the complexity of human behavior seen from the angle of the bucket and the robe. What we see as immoral, morally unacceptable, according to the bucket and the robe, it is questioned. Uh, the story is not only comparison of different visions of the same story, but the attitude of the bucket and rope are to question the human motivations, relations, and the complexity of, the, of their acts. And when they uh, take it on their burden, on their uh, way to discuss the mystery of human attitudes, they take Mr. Dandy as a prototype of humanity, which is in fact wrong as well because a human being is so complex, so varied in his motivation, and we cannot take one example and base it to explain the whole humanity. Uh, the importance of viewpoint here and art is what is described. Uh, the story is a puzzle story, someone who has just committed suicide, and the enigmatic and offhand way in which things are presented to us. So instead of becoming involved emotionally with the man, who killed himself, we are drawn to consider what happened in a more dispassionate way. So we follow the bucket and drop in explaining, trying to find out what motivated them, what led this man to commit suicide. And then we, we, we stand from the beginning of the story, we are in front of the scene of a corpse dangling the bucket uh, down and the rope up, and in between the corpse is dangling and bucket and drop is conversing. So conversation between bucket and drop is traversing the corpse, the human body. And it is a moment in the same way, the beginning of the story starts with uh, Mr. Dandy hanging himself and ends with the same scene, which means we are in a circular movement and the knot around Mr. Dandy is also the knot that we try to unknot with the bucket and drop. But at the end, we discover nearly somehow the cause of the suicide. And this leads me to, to deal with the narrative taking the story. Of course, it is a third person narration. And the first eight paragraphs are entirely narrated. And the rest of the story is direct speech, so speech produced by the bucket and drop, with no narrative intervention apart from the associated reporting clauses. And this helps to give the story a straightforward and simple air. The third person narration is associated with objective presentation of the facts of the story. But the direct speech mode creates the illusion that the narrator's author interfering with the speech presented in only minimal ways. And the room is left for the two objects, bucket and drop, telling, conversing, and through 
their conversation, we, uh, we try to infer some of the motivations behind Mr. Dandy's suicide. The beginning said the rope after a few minutes silence as the body swung to and fro. So this is the beginning of the story, the story which means that we are in front of the moments quickly right after Mr. Bad is uh, committing suicide and his body is moving through and fro and there is a moment of silence of the bucket and throat, a moment of reflection and this silence is very reflective of the impact of Mr. Dante's suicide. And uh, it sums up the reasons for the bucket and the rope's perplexity. Uh, they are used to Mr. Dante's moving in life, but at this uh, now he is speechless and he is a corpse and they are perplexed. And it brings us back to the idea the bucket and drop are conducting their conversation across the body of the man who has used uh, them to kill himself. So bucket and drop as before they were used by Mr. Dandy, but now they are also used as tools of his suicide. Objects of life are also ironically the object of death. Uh, initial narrator, narration followed by direct speech dialogue, as I said, and the whole story is a dialogue between the two objects. And immediately before the beginning of the presentation of those story, the bucket and the rope have been used by Mr. Dante to commit suicide, and the bucket then suggests that this act is curious, if not altogether surprising. So curiosity and surprise of the bucket and rope. How come that I mean, a man, a kind man, hardworking man, uh, come to uh, such a tragic end? And the surprise of the bucket and the rope is the, also the surprise of the reader. And the narrator at the beginning tells us the bucket and the rope have decided to uh, review Mr. Dandy's life in order to understand humankind better. This is one of the ironies. It is we take a character here to understand the complexity of humanity uh, and they are puzzled uh, by a number of other things he has done in the past. And the direct speech contains description of what they saw and their attempt to find plausible hypotheses to explain his suicide. And as long as they read, we start to infer some of the points. Also, the style of the story is rather simple, straightforward, as we would expect in a fable. Also, the story tends to a kind of archaism because there are a series of words and expressions that belong to uh, a frame of old-fashioned literary uh, uh, expressions. We have, for example, purchase, the folk, our master, winning gate, emergence, and, and so on. Uh, and this is in keeping with the tone of a fable as a traditional story handing down uh, folk wisdom. So uh, it is very traditional because the setting also is, is traditional and it is significant that the story contains no reference to that would enable us to place the events uh, and describe, uh, describe historically. Uh, so the tendency to uh, archaism underlines the timelessness of the story. That is to say, it is not limited, but it can be expanded to uh, uh, ask questions about humankind, as the bucket and drop are uh, meant to study Mr. Dandy as a prototype of humanity. Uh, and when they start conversation, there is a flashback memory, which the bucket shares with Dro. Uh, perhaps you can remember as well as I, the joyful day when we were first purchased, which happened to be the very day before me, Mr. Dandy was married. So the first meeting with the bucket and the rope and Mr. Dandy is before marriage. And it is very significant to say that the story of the bucket and rope okay, is ranging between the period before and after, and the conversation starts this way. And uh, we, we start to detect the problem of marital relationship. And the move from the present to the past tense and the time to speak indicate a flashback. So it is a kind of flashback because they start to uh, uh, follow uh, Mr. Dandy's history in order to detect where things went wrong. So uh, complexity as we move fairly swiftly from an, one assumption into another. And for some time, the flashback is not about Mr. Dandy's 
uh, frustrating further uh, the readers wish to find out we, he, why he killed himself so sometimes there are digressions and we uh, we, are, we get lost but still we are within the frame of moving back in you know, a kind of flashback to detect where things went wrong a series of hypothetical words giving possible explanation and uh, Mr. Dandy's motivation of in killing himself uh, they are all taken uh, taken and rejected hypothesis. But there is one concern, the nose gay, uh, proposed by the bucket in an exclamatory statement appears at the end of the comment. At the end, there is something symbolical which reflects the truth, probably. And the, the first conceivable possibility finally occurs. Mr. Dandy was about 29 years old then and the young girl about 18, remarked the bucket. So she was, said the rope. But it is curious to think now what she did next. While Mr. Johnson and Mr. Dandy were talking, she coiled and uncoiled me, and then, in her girlish amusement, for she looked at him loving, uh, lovingly, she made a running noose of me, slipped it over the master's head, and pulled it down, uh, tight. So, ironically, the fact that his prospective wife marks makes the rope in a noose and puts it around Mr. Dandy's neck foreshadows his future suicide. So, as I said, there is uh, a moment in premarital life and afterwards. And in between, we have this foreshadowing gesture which signifies that probably it is the beginning of Mr. Dandy's tragic end. Uh, there are sections and uh, the speech of the bathaket and the rope becomes a key important part of narration, so they use we, I, to refer to themselves. Uh, no chronological order, as in traditional fables. If we sum up the events of the bucket and drop in chronological order, what we find is that the day before his wedding, he buys bucket and drop. Ironically, again here, uh, the object of that are the day of the wedding. Uh, Betty, second Betty, who is with uh, Mr. Dandy when he buys the rope, appears to be attracted to and involved with the lawyer's son when she is betrothed when she was written to Mr. Mr. Dandy. Three, the bucket and the rope observe Mr. Dandy over some years as he uses them. He appears to be a joyful, true countryman doing the proper tasks. Very important feature of Mr. Dandy, a hardworking man. Mr. Dandy observes his wife and the lawyer's son making love in his barn while they think he's in the church. He kills himself, hanging himself by means of the bucket and the rope. And the bucket and the rope try to work out why he killed himself. Finally, the bucket naively conclude that the bunch of flowers was the cause of Mr. Dandy's suicide. So uh, we try to find uh, a chronological uh, order of the story. And from Mr. Dandy's perspective, the movement is in the opposite direction. So from peace into disorder, from happiness to betrayal, and from happy life uh, he enjoys uh, to the fact that he lives with a wife who is unfaithful, which he can resolve only through suicide. And this is what we infer as readers when we follow the conversation of the bucket and the rope. And the conversation between the rope here, uh, they propose and reject in turn a series of possible explanations, Mr. Dandis. And we can see a series of negative points. It was not the stink of the course of the garbage, so our garbage, it was not the weight of the bucket, not his life, he had done. Uh, it's not, not, but, uh, the problem is that for the character, we, and we try, uh, there is hint of the news, the big bunch of flowers, which is unusual for a countryman. Uh, example, he picked a bunch of flowers and gave them to his wife, which the bucket record as not usual for a village man. And such a behavior, draw, a behavior draws attention. Uh, it was not the weather. He did like to see others happy. It was not his wife, she made him happy. Uh, so, a uh, series of in, uh, negations here. And at the end, it must have been that nosegay reappears to win us at the end. And it is uh, the last suggestion that we have in the story. Uh, nowhere in the story is there a proposition which states that Mr. Dandy loved her. Uh, we never see the couple inside home 
because the bucket and drop always are associated with Mr. Dandy outside. And uh, it's likely that Mr. Dandy loved his wife, given that she was young and attractive and that he chose to marry her. And uh, they never, uh, she never, the bucket and drop, uh, and the, the rope states at some uh, sometime, uh, they never once since they had been married, had Viti refused his embraces. And the only thing which could cause uh, count as a clear sign of his dentist's love for his wife is the fact that he picks the bunch of flowers and gives to her. So this bunch of flowers is indicative of both love and jealousy in the story. And Mr. Dandy crept out of the bundle and hid in the lane, snarling like a beaten dog. So the bucket preposition here that Betty was loving and kind to Dolores and just before Mr. Dandy commits suicide can easily be understood as a reference to her betrayal. Uh, we have an animal image here. Uh, a dog, snarling dog, shows Mr. Dandy's anger in discovering the truth of his wife. Also, the bucket... Uh, approves of Betty's action towards the Lord's son. She had yielded in kindness, but no wickedness in her. The, the kind of image that the bucket and the rope have about woman is very naive, showing that she is kind, but according to social norms, is that she is doing something immoral. So, as she made Mr. Dandy, her husband, happy, the thought that she could make others happy, and this is where they missed the point. So there are different perspectives here. He should have been glad to see that the lawyer's son thought her as nice as he did. His wife made him so happy, said the rope, and feeling her success with him, she naturally wished to make another happy too. And according to inanimate object, what Betty did is something normal, but according to human being, that's where the writer tries to raise the point of uh, the human uh, perplexity. Uh, when Mr. Dandy, as I said, picks the flower, he does so to give them to his wife an indication of love, and also it foreshadows his suicidal action. Uh, uh, the view of the bucket and the rope uh, is logical uh, in his tones. Uh, Mr. Dandy's self-destruction as an unusual form of behavior. And uh, the human view is also, uh, also logical in its own terms. Uh, the same self-destruction, she loves the lawyer's son, kicking the bucket, leaving bitty love for the lawyer's son. Uh, uh, this story, as I said, has a fable-like nature. And uh, in the, the bucket and the rope uh, can see, talk, reason, have views, but in all other respects to obey the natural and psychological law of the real world. The, uh, the story also is full of imagery and symbolism. Uh, they are very important, especially because we are dealing with uh, an allegory, and they enrich the story, the story, and it gives further implication. There are religious, biblical images, animal images, and there are symbols, including objects, places, beings, standing for something. For example, religious and biblical imagery, we have water as a religious image, source of life, and bucket and rope are associated with bringing water out of the well, and the well with its life-giving water occurs most frequently in Christian and Muslim contexts. It is associated with life, but ironically, it becomes a source of destruction and death here because uh, it, destiny, uh, there is an expectant change. Instead of water, bucket is kicked and used for macabre, and that is death. Garden, uh, city, country, life, a place where action takes place. It is a paradise-like source of life as a joy and happiness, but in turned into uh, a graveyard-like, because from a uh, dandy as an active, happy man to a dangly corpse between bucket and rope. Uh, I think about the garden here. Uh, it reminds me of Adam and Eve's story, a heaven-like, committing a sin, punishment. And I raise the question here, could we say that the writer of produce the same story? Could we say he blames women for committing a sin? Who is to blame? So it is uh, to be debated. Church, religious association, Christian values. Mr. Dandy goes to church, good, naive, and simple man. But there is in the story uh, the uh, uh, reference to the clock in the church tower at the top of the town struck three, but no one seemed to give any heed to it. 
striking three stands for probably Trinity, a reference to Christianity, and this statement implies that people's religious carelessness is the source of moral destruction, and there is the moral dimension there. And uh, it is when Mr. Dandy stopped moving to the church, uh, he discovered his wife's betrayal. So instead of going to church, he came to his shed, shed took me up and bound me around in a large bundle of stone. And that's where the story uh, raises the point of the moral, the religious, and the involvement of a human being and a human complexity of human relationship. Uh, we have also some uh, negative connotations in uh, people's behavior, uh, people with negative religious connotations, especially through the lenses of the bucket and the roof. For example, criticism of people talking, gossiping, two old men came, their tongues cackled and gobbled. Pride, a grand military gentleman who saw his own reflection every window. Uh, example, uh, last two young and pleasing girls who were ready for love, they watched coolly every young man in the street and laughed in order to show what they longed for. Uh, 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 animal imagery as well, uh, pigs frequently repeated. Mr. Dandy fattened some nice pigs, reference to gluttony, collect the swill for the pigs. We were more pigs to be fattened. I have seen pigs fed often. Pigs are associated with the hidden dissatisfied desires and which are at the source of the human destruction. There is a certain implicit criticism of human behavior when not controlled by reason as it lacks noble values. Cows, dogs, nearly like a dog, cackling to women. So we have animal associations uh, reflecting the negat negative connotation, uh, criticism of some uh, wrong human behavior. Probably reference to the seven deadly sins uh, and as an allegory, the story is set in a Christian agriculture and conservative context. It tends to delineate as a seed aspect of goodness, Mr. Dandy, and criticizes the sinful behavior of his surrounding through sets of imagery, and as we say, we have pride, greediness, lust, envy, gluttony, anger. And the bucket, also apart from this biblical imagery, we have some sets of symbols, bucket and drop itself, two key symbols. They stand ironically for death, while they are supposed to be for life, uh, used by the protagonists as faithful companions and tools, making his life easier, but also quietening his sadness and rage through death. They embody the mystery of human existence, standing between life and death. The, it is the main theme of the story. They converse while Mr. Dandy Cops is dangling. Bucket, of course, with idiomatic expression, kick in the bucket. Rope, coil and coil, noose. Uh, and as I quoted before here, it foreshadowed the, uh, the end of a good, uh, hardworking man. The country, sitting, paradise-like place where gifts of God are omnipresent in being, vegetables, animals. However, such an idyllic and peaceful place is disturbed by, hum by human behavioral drives and there is where we have this moral criticism. Shed, a closed space where Dandy keeps object, and it becomes the grave as well. The house, Betty is presented to housewife, and the couple are never presented or delineated inside the house. We are we always seeing them uh, far from each other, and we never uh, consider them inside the house. Flowers, as we said here, he carried the flowers home to his wife, replied the bucket, and flowers stand for the expression of the love Mr. Dante feels, but also embody an expression of jealousy. Probably, I say the color yellow could indicate such a feeling. Uh, flowers, the last, I mean, it must have been that, no, this is the last sentence that we have in the story. It is the last sentence, and it reveals that the answer lies in the unusual behavior of a village man picking flowers and carrying them to his wife. Uh, and there are here two possible answers. Either the bucket and the rope do not see what we consider as human behavior, or they are too clever that they see and we do not, or, uh, or could not see, and consequently deride and mock our human stupidity. So as uh, camera-like eyes, they are witnessing and judging human behavior from uh, the external part, and they, they laugh at human stupidity. Uh, so the negative statement uh, reveal affirmative answers, and I, I quote here, 
It is difficult to set the rope after a few minutes silence as the body swung to and fro for us to decide what could have troubled this good man. No one had robbed him, no one had beaten him or hurt him, and never once since they had been married had Peter refused his embraces. Ironically, there is negative repetition of no, no, reveal affirmative answers. It is through negation that we get the affirmative. Uh, concerning the themes of the story, one of the strongest themes is that mystery of human behavior and action. And the whole story is printed while the protagonist corpse is dangling between the two objects. And the different situ pre situation presented and assumptions suggestion sh suggested show the complicated relationships and complex feeling human experiences. Solitary and isolated state of the protagonist while the whole world is carelessly moving around him. And Mr. Dandy alone here is involved in his lowly hard work while others are carrying their life. Also, one another important theme is betrayal. Bucket and rope are presented as eyewitnesses and the fact that they are objective and reliable witnesses reveal that what they see, say and so is believable. And they draw the reader to sympathize with Mr. Dandy, a good, happy and simple countryman, and condemn the other uh, BT as a creature presented in the story as a source of desire. Uh, to end here as a conclusion, I would like to uh, would like you to do some research on the following and reflect on the questions. First, there are key words that I'd like you to see: concepts, allegory, fable, satire, sarcasm, irony. And I ask question here: Why the bucket and the rope? What effect does their conversation bring to the story? Would it be the same if it were narrated by a human being? Are they reliable? Why, why not? What is the moral of the story? And throughout these stories, as I said, the bucket and the rope is an allegory. It is written from and narrated from the point of view of two inanimate objects. And the moral is there to condemn. Uh, instead of revealing and explaining the human complexity, it deepens our uh, uh, concept of the complexity of the human behavior.